Hello and welcome to your weekly five minutes of intercourse with Dr. Don, because we all need to talk at least a little about sex. Transgender, cisgender, agender, heterosexual, homosexual, bisexual, transsexual, pansexual, intersexual, asexual, transvestite, androgynous. The dating site Tinder has 37 different gender options. Facebook has 71 and Tumblr has 112 with 70 different orientations. Whatever happened to boys being boys? and girls being girls. Hmm, or was this actually never happening? Let's spend this week's five minutes, as well as next week's five minutes of intercourse, exploring the real definitions of biological sex, gender, and sexual orientation. Sad to say, there are no other subjects us humans judge more harshly than subjects involving sexuality. And biological sex, gender, and sexual orientation, unfortunately, are prime examples of the unnecessary judgment we put under the condition we call human. Now, there are ways to fight sexual intolerance, with the best way being education. And the best way to educate ourselves to understand the roots of sex, gender, and orientation is by building a human organism. So let's do just that. This week, using 10 ingredients, let's build a human organism. And next week, we'll analyze what conclusions about sex, gender, and orientation can be drawn from this week's building project. Unless there's a test tube or Petri dish involved, biological sex, gender, and sexual orientation begins with two people having coitus. Now, I'm all about making this channel real for you. So if you want to make this building project more personal by thinking about your own sex, gender, and orientation, then we would have to imagine your parents as the two people having sex with one another. Maybe we should just skip to the first ingredient. Ingredient number one, sex chromosomes. Conception occurs when a single sperm and a single ovum come together to share the respective chromosomes, resulting in chromosomal sexes of quintuple X, quadruple X, triple X, double X, triple XY, double XY, single XY, double X, double XY mosaic, or even a single X. So what chromosomal sex are you? Are you sure? Ingredient number two, gonads. About five weeks after conception, the brain's cortex differentiates into ovaries or the brainstem's medulla differentiates into testes, or ovatestes are formed, which contain both ovarian and testicular tissue, or there is no gonadal differentiation at all. What gonads do you have? Are you sure? Ingredient number three, sex hormones. Soon after the gonads are formed, they begin producing testosterone, progesterone, and estrogen the so-called sex hormones. Let me take a moment here to break a stereotype. Estrogen is not a female hormone and testosterone is not a male hormone because both hormones are needed for human development. The testes generally do produce more testosterone than the ovaries and the ovaries generally do produce more estrogen and progesterone. But this is not always the case. And how the sex hormones are used is less dependent upon quantity and more dependent upon the hormones receptor sites. So what sex hormones and receptor sites do you have? Are you sure? 
Ingredient number four, internal sex organs. About seven weeks after conception and dependent upon levels of testosterone and its respective receptor sites, the epididymis, seminal vesicles, and vas deferens form, or without any hormonal intervention, the fallopian tubes, uterus, and inner two-thirds of the vagina form. Before this time, we all had the potential of having male and female internal sex organs. And in fact, without a hormone called malarian inhibiting substance, some people have both sets of internal sex organs, and still others without adequate levels of testosterone or its respective receptor sites have neither set of internal sex organs. What internal sex organs do you have? Are you sure? Ingredient number five, sex, gender, and orientation on the brain. From about the 13th to the 20th week after conception, estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone are having the greatest prenatal organizational effects on the brain relative to future emotions, behaviors, and thoughts related to sex, gender identity, and sexual orientation. So, what sex, gender, and orientation is your brain? Are you sure? Ingredient number six, external sex organs. 20 weeks after conception, and dependent upon testosterone levels and its respective receptor sites, the penis and scrotum are formed, or without any hormonal intervention, the clitoris in outer one-third of the vagina is formed. The size of the external sex organs is in part due to the levels of testosterone and its respective receptor sites, thus potentially causing an enlarged labia or micropenis, or in extreme cases, delaying the growth of the penis until puberty. What external sex organs do you have? Are you sure? Ingredient number seven, birth sex. Shortly after birth, the physician or healthcare worker determines the baby's biological sex. Interestingly though, this determination is not based upon chromosomes, gonads, hormones, receptor sites, internal sex organs, the brain, or even really external sex organs. The vulva is never addressed. Instead, everything on the birth certificate as it relates to biological sex is based upon the penis. If the newborn does not have a penis, then the baby is determined as being a female. If the newborn does have a penis, it is not determined as being a male until the length of its penis passes two tests. Does the length have the potential to be long enough as an adult to one, have vaginal intercourse in the missionary position, and two, urinate while standing up? If the newborn's penis size does not meet these two future standards, then the baby is diagnosed as having a micropenis, usually less than three quarters of an inch at birth and routinely it's recommended to the baby's parents to reassign their baby's sex to female, which involves castration, surgical reconstruction, and estrogen treatments. So what's your birth certificate sex? Does it match your biological sex? Are you sure? Ingredient number eight, gender roles. Immediately after birth and oftentimes before, Society is binarily determining what boys and girls should be doing. From things as simple as boys should be wearing blue and girls should be wearing pink, to things as complex as boys should be assertive and girls should be passive. These roles as determined by society appear to be set in stone but they are purely subjective and they change with time and culture. For example, today, 
American and European cultures present pink as being feminine and blue as being masculine. But these same cultures, only a hundred years ago, were swaddling baby boys in pink because of its masculine associations with blood and war, and dressing little girls in blue because of its feminine associations with the Virgin Mary. How is society determining your gender? Are you sure? Ingredient number nine, gender identity and expression. As language is rapidly forming by two to three years of age, so too is self-concept. Self-concept is how we define and identify ourselves. And the first item we use to identify ourselves is typically gender. So by age three, not only is our society judging our behaviors as being masculine or feminine, so too are we thinking about our own gender characteristics and how we are expressing them. How are you expressing your gender? Do you even know? Ingredient number 10, sexual orientation. By age 10, sex hormones are having their greatest postnatal organizational effects on the brain. Children are forming my girlfriend and my boyfriend relationships, and they're examining their own and others' sexual orientations. What's your sexual orientation? Are you sure? It's alive. Oh, it's alive. It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. We've done it. We've successfully built a human organism and shown all of its potential sex, gender, and orientation characteristics. Beyond 10 years of age and for the rest of this human's life, the interactions between these ingredients of chromosomal sex, gonadal sex, sex hormones, internal sex organs, the brain, external sex organs, birth sex, psychological intentions, and culture will continue. But ironically, rarely fit into sociologically constructed binary categories of sex, gender, or orientation. My time is nearly up this week, about eight minutes ago. Let me end this week's intercourse with a promise and a question. I promise next week to be sharing what conclusions I think can be drawn about sex, gender, and orientation based upon this week's human building project. In the meantime, let me ask you, what conclusions do you think can be drawn from our building project, specifically as they relate to your sex, gender, and orientation? Share these with me in the comment section below or on Twitter at 5MI underscore weekly, hashtag my sex, gender, orientation. Thanks for watching. If you could rate this video, I'd appreciate it. Like us on Facebook at 5MI Weekly and follow us on Twitter. If you have suggestions about intercourse topics, then leave your ideas in the comment section or send those suggestions on Twitter to at 5MI underscore weekly using the hashtag 5MI Topics. If I use your ideas for an intercourse, then I promise I'll be sending you a free copy of Being, my book on happiness.